civilians should stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. After the last note of the national anthem, and after the class is passed, you may then return your hand to your side. We also ask that all cell phones and other electronic devices be silenced at this time. As the flights pass in review, applause is appropriate, but please limit that applause so that others may hear the narration of the names and hometowns of the military training instructors. Please reserve the strictest respect during our oath of enlistment. During this oath, Airmen pledge their lives to support and defend the Constitution and our country. For the safety and comfort of those around you, we ask that you remain in place until our distinguished guests have left the reviewing stand and departed the area. Restroom facilities are located in the buildings on either side of the parking lot. And during this morning ceremony, smoking and the consumption of alcoholic beverages is not permitted. Finally, please do not go onto the grassy areas when taking photos during the ceremony. The flights before you today are named after Air Force pioneers who have made significant contributions to our enlisted heritage. They have special meaning to all airmen, especially those who are transitioning from civilians to warrior airmen of character. Today's graduates make up these heritage flights and will continue to shape our Air Force. And now, I'd like to take a moment to inform you on specific flight locations on the parade field. As you from the bleachers, from your left to your right, the first flight to pass in review today is named for the fourth Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Thomas A. Barnes. Barnes flight. Chief Barnes promoted racial and gender equality throughout the Air Force and quality of life issues for all areas. The next flight is named for the 17th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, James A. Cody. Cody flight. Chief Cody implemented the new Airman Comprehensive Assessment along with developing teams to assess the future career paths for airmen. They are followed by Andrews Flight, named for the son of Chief Master Sergeant Air Force, Arthur, R. Arthur L. Andrews. Chief Andrews emphasized taking care of the people to accomplish the mission. The next flight is named for the 11th Chief Master Sergeant Air Force, David J. Campanelli. Campanelli Flight. Chief Campanelli fought for retirement benefits and airman housing to improve chief retention. They are followed by Airy Flight, named for the first Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Paul W. Airy. Not only was Chief Airy the first Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, he also helped create the Airman Promotion System and recognized the need for professional military education for non-commissioned officers. The next flight is named for the first woman to enter the Air Force, Staff Sergeant Esther McDowell Blake. Blake Flight. Sergeant Blake enlisted in the first minute of the first hour of the first day that regular Air Force duty was authorized for women in 1948. In the center of the parade field are the 737 train routes drum and, drum and bugle corps. Murray Flight, named for the 14th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Gerald R. Murray. Chief Murray focused on meeting expeditionary airmen while placing greater emphasis on family standards of living. The flights selected to carry our national, state, and territorial flag are named for the 12th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Eric W. Benjamin. Thank you, flight. During this time, Warrior Week was created for basic training to basic training to better prepare airmen for today's joint fight. They are followed by Benneker Flight, named for the 9th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, James E. Benneker. Chief Benneker facilitated Master Sergeant's professional education and significant changes in the enlisted performance report. The next flight is named for this Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Robert E. Gaylor. Gaylor Flight. During his time, he worked to improve race and gender issues, influence policy changes, and worked to improve the Air Force image. They are followed by Kingston Flight, named for the 10th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Gary R. Kingston. Chief Fitch Kingston made significant improvements in airman entitlements during Desert Storm. The next flight is named for the second Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Donald L. Harlow. Harlow Flight. Chief Harlow further, de further developed the airman promotion system and revived eligibility for flight pay. They are followed by a McKinley Flight, 
Name for the 15th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Rodney J. McKinley. Chief McKinley influenced significant improvements in force shaping, retraining, and fitness standards. The last flight to pass in review is Matthew's flight, named for Medal of Honor recipient, Staff Sergeant Archibald Matthews. During an operation, his plane was attacked. Although Sergeant Matthews was ordered to jump from the crippled aircraft, he stayed behind to attempt to land the plane and preserve the injured pilot's life. At this time, please find a place to sit. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the entrance of our official party. Please remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Mbappé. Let us pray. Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace, I commend this day to you for you have made it wonderful for these graduating women to remember. Today they are the newest United States Air Force warriors. They made it possible because of the people you put in their lives. We thank you for their families and friends. We thank you for their military training instructors and staff for their unflinching dedication to train them as airmen in their world's greatest air force. Bless them as they go forth to technical training. Give them courage to live with integrity and to serve our country selflessly with dignity, honor, and sacrifice. Give them loving hearts and open minds. Protect them from harm and peril. And may they embody what they are called to be. Air Force warriors, our nation's sword and shield, women and above all element. May what they do advance peace and justice, not only in our country, but also in the world. I say my prayer in the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Mbappé. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Welcome to the basic military training graduation. We are honored to introduce our 37th training wing leadership beginning with our host for today's ceremony. The Commander, 37th Training Wing, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas, Brigadier General Trent Edwards, accompanied by his wife, Vanessa. <laughs> today's reviewing official is the Commander, Basic Military Training, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas, Colonel William Fisher, accompanied by his wife, Jane. <laughs> the Superintendent, Basic Military Training, Joint Base San Antonio, Blackland, Texas, Chief Master Sergeant, Richard Sutherland. <laughs> Although time does not permit us to introduce all our distinguished guests, the 37th Training Wing is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. The airmen who will pass in review today have completed a demanding seven and a half week program that provides Air Force units throughout the world with trained airmen. Part of this training includes the time proven concepts of military customs and traditions, of which this parade is a vital part. All graduating airmen will also march over the enlisted heroes walk. They will lead the way for thousands of airmen that will follow, all reflecting on our enlisted heritage, tradition of honor, and legacy of valor. Our Commander of Airmen is Staff Sergeant Charles Richardson, Military Drill and Ceremonies Non-Commissioned Officer, 
321st Training Squadron. Colonel Fisher will review today's ceremony.
Thank you. Please be seated.
present the command. March the command in review.
week, we will support you have transformed from civilians into motivated, disciplined warrior airmen with a foundation to serve in the world's greatest air force. Once the Airmen Week base goes their training, they will enter Airmen Week, where they will develop their critical thinking skills and further personalize the Air Force core values. They will continue on to technical training to learn the skills needed to perform in one of over 130 Air Force units. They will then go on to serve at one of over 84 Air Force bases around the world. They will work directly with their system services. As these airmen move on to technical training, they will continue to focus on adapting to military requirements, achieving occupational proficiency, and learning how to be highly productive members of the Air Force. These men and women will prepare or be prepared for increased responsibility and must ensure they are trained, qualified, and ready to deploy and operate in an expeditionary environment while maintaining home station readiness. Of the hundreds of thousands of American citizens that enter the workforce this year, less than 1% join the ranks of the U.S. military, and even smaller percentage in the United States Air Force. You should be proud of their accomplishments thus far. The airmen before you have reached a milestone in their Air Force journey and will require you to continue support to assist them in their future endeavors. These airmen are the future of our Air Force and will pave the way for future generations of airmen as we continue to fly, fight, and win.
Are you ready to join the ranks of the world's greatest Air Force? Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I state your name. Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Do you solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States? That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. According to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Airmen, and welcome to the world's greatest. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as our newest airman recites the airman's creed and remain in place for the departure of our official partner. I am an American airman. I am a warrior. I have answered my nation's call. I am an American airman. My mission is to fly, fight, and win. I am faithful to a proud heritage, a tradition of honor, and a legacy of valor. I am an American airman. Guardian of freedom and justice. My nation's sword and shield. Its century and adventure. I defend my Next, Azekar and Gerber Flight, followed by Kingston and Harbor Flight. 